Hey guys, what's up? It's me, BP, uh, Bucket Ponds, and I'm in the shack today with another exclusive video. Uh, this time I'm going to show you how to grow your own green water cultures. Uh, nobody told me this online, but uh, green water is really useful when you're trying to raise things like ostracods or uh, detritus worms. Uh, DT worms uh, in particular are, uh, they're not hard to raise, but there's no information online. No one will help you. There's no guides. I'm slowly becoming the internet expert, uh, just through sheer experience. So uh, yeah, I found that the green water is uh, just a crucial part of setting up a culture for these smaller creatures. And uh, it's really not hard to do. Uh, just a little light and a starter culture and you're ready to go. This is a green water culture that I started a few months ago. Nothing fancy, but uh, this is Chlorella vulgaris. I've noticed, um, see when I first started, I watched a lot of uh, Life in Jars and Michael Langerman and similar channels, and uh, even if they didn't mention it at the time, anyone that's raising ostracots is doing so in green water. They, I believe they eat it, they might feed on it, it might just be a uh, symbiotic relationship, I'm not really sure, but I know if you have algae, you have green water, you've got ostracots. I imagine the same goes for uh, Daphnia and uh, similar creatures. So let's get started. All right guys, the first thing you want to do is get yourself some good sand. Uh, I noticed that ostracods love sand and uh, they like live plants too, but we're not gonna worry so much about the plants today. This is just some old dirt from my yard, old sandy soil. And uh, we're just gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. As you can see here, I'm using uh, essentially uh, clear beer bottles. These are actually Smirnoff bottles, but I like them because they're very clear. A lot of light gets through. They're easy to see, and for this purpose, they work pretty well. Again, don't overthink it. Just get you a clean container, make sure it's been washed, rinsed, and cleaned repeatedly until you're confident that it's uh, sterile, or at least free of, you know, alcohol or chemicals or anything like that. And uh, just cram some sand in there. You don't want to worry about getting too much, but uh, you don't want a little bit, you want a fair amount. At least a few spoonfuls would work. And you're gonna get a little messy. That's part of the fun. All right, and as you can see here, we have added our sand and just a little bit of water. It was wet sand and a little fresh water to help clean up the container. You don't need a whole lot of sand, but uh, any amount definitely helps. That looks pretty good to me. They're all about that level. We have seven cultures here, by the way. Next up, I like to include hardscape. Uh, this is a marble chunk. Small marble pebbles here. Marble is an excellent source of calcium. All right, so let's get to the next step. Water. That's right, guys. Now, if you don't have access to a uh, bucket pond like we do, you can collect rainwater. Uh, yeah. Um, in my experience, my pond water here is an excellent source for growing green water. I'm sure there's spores in every container as it is. And uh, you can collect the same water from a pond or from a, uh, a lake. But uh, in our case, we're gonna use bucket pond water. Now, as you can see here, I'm just siphoning off a small amount of pond water. You don't wanna fill your containers all the way up because uh, we will be adding samples from our green water culture here in a moment. Again, if you don't have access to bucket ponds, uh, I highly suggest you start one. But if you don't have one, uh, pond water works, lake water, and just plain old rainwater is a great source as well. Now, just to clarify, I am pulling chlorella vulgaris or green water algae out of a uh, culture that I've had running for a while now. Uh, your first cultures will look more like this. Uh, Again, I added too many plants to this. Didn't do it right. It still works for ostracods, but it could be so much better. So we're switching to our pre-cycled 
a thick, densely grown green algae container here. And uh, yeah, we'll be adding it to all our bottles here in about three seconds. Here's another great shot of our green water chlorella vulgaris algae. Um, again, people really underestimate the beauty of algae, but just look at that. Look at that emerald green glow. You know, wouldn't you love to have one of these just sitting in your window? 20 milliliters per bottle. And that should be enough to get things started. And there's a better shot of our green water culture here. Uh, remember, if you are pulling from a pre-existing culture, that's a good time to go ahead and add fresh water to top it back off. Because you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot and, you know, mess up your other cultures, your other containers. Uh, this little bit of detritus and things in here is pretty normal. All right, guys. So as you can see here, we've got all of our bottles appropriately set up. I did remove a little bit of water just because I overfilled them and you'll see why in a second. As you can see here, we have uh, quite a few ostracods. Those little black dots moving around, those are all uh, born and bred right here in the uh, Bucket Ponds family. And they're going right into these containers. And there's just one more shot of our domesticated ostracods here. You see all those little particles? Those are our friends. Definitely suggest giving them some fish flakes. Nothing fancy. Uh, I use this stuff right here. The cheapest goldfish flakes you can find by Tetra. Good stuff. Uh, I have noticed that it seems to bring planaria with it, which is a little bit unusual, but uh, once I switch to this food, we had planaria, so it could be a coincidence. Uh, in a pinch, and just as a variety, I also give them pleco wafers from time to time. Just a little piece of one. I think we'll go ahead and do that now, and uh, call it a day. Alright guys, I'm BP, Bucket Ponds, and that was a quick crash course on how to grow green water for your ostracods. Uh, just feed them fish flakes, uh, algae wafers. They'll also eat any wild algae that grows in the tank. Remember to provide sunlight for your green water, it's very important. And uh, yeah, your ostracods will eat any uh, wild algae that grows in the tank, including the green water, the vulgaris algae, which makes it a mutually beneficial system. The algae will benefit from any une uneaten food or uh, uh, minerals from the sand and hardscape. And uh, overall, it's a system that works well together. Uh, you will notice detritus worms if you collected wild water. Uh, that's totally cool. Detritus worms are not harmful. Don't be afraid of them. Uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. I'm BP. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that stuff. Uh, I really appreciate the love. Uh, every view matters. Every viewer matters. And uh, you can catch us on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash bucket ponds. I share some pictures and uh, collection trips, uh, wild micro fishing, things like that. The occasional scientific article and uh yeah, whatever else seems interesting. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, keep stay tuned for.